We often think that the path to financial success is by earning more. We think that a higher paycheck will cover our expenses, which will allow us to finally start saving. However, if you're looking to improve your financial situation, earning more money is at best only half the solution. You won't make progress until you reduce your costs, or they'll just keep climbing along with your income. Here are 9 of the best ways to trim those expenses efficiently. Number 1. Plan your trips to the grocery store. One of the biggest expenses for many families is food, and one of the easiest ways to save money on your grocery bill is by planning your trip ahead of time. If you go to the store with a concrete plan about what you want to buy, you're more likely to avoid buying junk food and random items that you don't need. It's also so important to not go grocery shopping when you're hungry, as you'll end up buying a lot more than you intended to. Additionally, if you go to the store only when you need to, instead of picking up groceries whenever the urge strikes you, you're more likely to stick to your list and avoid temptation. It's even better if you can order your groceries online, as you can then plan exactly what you want to buy. Without being enticed by expensive junk or comfort food, while browsing through the supermarket shelves. Number 2. Buy generic or store brands instead of name brands. Instead of buying name brand items, try getting the generic or store brand equivalent. You don't have to switch everything to a brand you've never heard of. You can try this with just a few items, to see if you notice a difference in quality. And according to some estimates, store brands are up to 40% cheaper than name brands, which can be a decent chunk of change. It's good to test generic brands of things you use regularly, and you may be surprised to find out that the difference could be negligible. In fact, in some cases, you may even prefer the cheaper alternative. Number 3. Eat at home, or bring food to the workplace. Still on the topic of food, eating out is another big expense that most people tend to incur every month. Even a modest restaurant meal will cost more than an equivalent home-cooked meal, so it's much cheaper, and healthier, to prepare your own meals at home. If you have children, eating more meals at home is even more important. Children usually love to go to restaurants, but the cost can add up quickly. Not to mention the fact that kids don't always make the healthiest menu choices. By eating more meals at home, you can ensure that your children are eating a healthy diet, while also controlling your expenses. Number 4. Sell your extra stuff. One of the easiest ways to reduce your expenses is by selling things that you have sitting around collecting dust. We all have junk lying around our houses that is worth something to someone else. Whether it's clothes you haven't worn, a set of dishes that was given to you, or that old TV that doesn't work. There is stuff all over our homes that we indirectly pay to keep, in the form of storage. There's also the additional cost of heating or cooling a messy, cluttered home. Between eBay, Craigslist, and other online marketplaces, there are plenty of ways to unload your stuff. You can even make money by selling things at home, like holding a garage sale. If you don't have time or the inclination to post your stuff online and then arrange shipping. Number 5. Reduce your utility bills. There are all sorts of easy ways to reduce your utility bills. In many cases, cutting expenses is as simple as changing your habits. For example, remember to turn off the heat or AC before you go out or go to work. And when you're not at home. This is often the largest daily utility expense in the winter and summer months. Utilize dark drapes or shades to keep warmth in and sunlight out during the daytime. You should also clean your air filters on a periodic basis. Clean, efficient filters improve effectiveness and can reduce your heating and cooling bills significantly. Closing windows and doors when the AC is on is another good habit. This keeps the cooled air inside, where you want it, rather than letting warm air enter the room. It also makes sense to use the timer function on your AC when you go to sleep, so that you don't need to have it on the whole night. Chances are, you won't notice anyway, since you'll be asleep. LED lights are another good idea. While the initial cost may be higher, LED lights have a much longer lifespan than regular incandescent bulbs. And use only a fraction of the energy too, 
about 75% less. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, lighting typically accounts for 15% of a home's electricity use. So these energy savings will definitely add up. Number 6. Refinance your loans where possible. Lenders are always looking to bring in new customers via refinancing. This includes both credit card debt and mortgage debt. In both cases, a good initial step is to contact a credit counseling agency first to see if you qualify for any advice or assistance. For credit cards, the next step would be to look into lower interest rate cards and balance transfer offers. These are usually plentiful, as the market tends to be pretty competitive. In the case of mortgage debt, refinance if rates are significantly lower than when you originally took out the loan. However, beware of the fine print on these loan agreements, such as prepayment penalties and closing fees. Comparison websites such as NerdWallet or Bankrate.com can be a big help in sifting through the many refinancing offers out there and will provide you with the key information you need to make a more informed decision. Number 7. Don't upgrade your gadgets unless you really need to. We're all tempted to buy when a newer, better device is released. Whether it's a smartphone, a tablet or a laptop, having the latest technology in these products is fun and exciting, but it can cost a lot of money. Upgrading simply because it's available isn't wise financially, and will eventually hurt your savings or cause you to miss other financial goals. Instead, stick with your current device for as long as is practical. Many modern smartphones, for example, are advanced and durable enough to be able to last for three years or more. If your gadget suffers severe damage or you find that its capabilities have degraded over time, look to repair it first. Only if this fails, should you consider an upgrade. Otherwise, enjoy what you have and don't be too concerned about keeping up with the latest. Materialism and consumerism only benefits gadget manufacturers, at your expense. Number 8. Shop around for cheaper insurance. First things first. Insurance is an absolute must, to protect yourself, loved ones or even your possessions. In 2018 in the US alone, it was estimated that there were 87 million people who were considered underinsured. And who would have to shell out their own cash to pay for a medical emergency? Having said that, insurance bills can add up, so it pays to shop around and compare policies. You may be able to secure the same coverage and benefits for less money. Insurance agents are paid on commission, so they're not necessarily incentivized to find you the cheapest or most suitable deal. Supplementing their advice and recommendations with a little research of your own can save you a lot of money. The financial comparison websites that we talked about earlier, provide excellent comparisons of insurance companies and their policies. As well as deals on travel and car insurance. Number 9. Ditch your landline. In this day and age, it's completely possible to survive and thrive without a landline phone. There are some people who still use them, but a lot of residents in urban areas, as well as business owners, are getting by using only their mobile phone. If you're still clinging on to your home phone in spite of this, consider that a typical home phone service can cost $20 to $35 per month. But if you're like 99.9% .9 of the population, you already have a mobile line, which can easily replace a landline. Not only that, but many mobile providers offer unlimited calling and unlimited data. So you won't run up outrageous voice fees like you would with a landline. If you do need to add a second line for business purposes or otherwise, you can always consider trading in for a dual SIM phone, which allows you to have two numbers on the same phone, eliminating the need for a second device altogether. Check out these videos next, on the best tips and tricks to help you save even more.